Macbeth is one of Shakespeare's most famous works. Well-known lines such as fair is foul and foul is fair, along with double, double, toil, trouble, fire, burn, and cauldron bubble come from this play. The play also has an easy-to-understand plotline, which has lent itself to numerous adaptations. Some of the more notable adaptations include Joe Macbeth, set as a gang war in Chicago, Macbeth, set in World War II, and most notably Throne of Blood, set in feudal Japan. Today we will be reviewing Throne of Blood's plot, characters, and themes. One major difference between Akira Kurosawa's film Throne of Blood and William Shakespeare's play Macbeth is their depictions of the battle at the opening stages of the plot. The play Macbeth opens with grotesque imagery of the revolt. The captain reporting about the battle even describes Macbeth as unseeming one of his opponents. This type of gory imagery, however, is nowhere to be found at the start of Kurosawa's Throne of Blood. The film instead opens with a vast fog, with a seemingly peaceful castle depicted behind the fog. It also features various captains reporting about the battle, but there are no depictions about the battle. The use of fog and the lack of violence set an eerie and uncertain tone for the rest of the film, as were in Macbeth. The brutal depictions of the battle set a violent and dark tone right away. Kurosawa uses the fog as well as the silence in the opening scenes to set a very vague tone that doesn't give any hints about the future of the film. This uncertain tone and the lack of violence also play a role in the viewer's perception of Washizu, Throne of Blood's equivalent to Macbeth. In Shakespeare's play, the depiction of his brutal attacks that open up the play make Macbeth's future killings somewhat less surprising, since this brutal imagery has already been associated with Macbeth. In the opening stages of Kurosawa's Throne of Blood, however, Washizu is not seen killing anyone. This makes his future actions even more shocking and meaningful to the audience. The shock factor of Washizu's actions is also due to the fact that there are no witches at the start of Throne of Blood. In the play Macbeth, the witches start out the play by invoking the name of Macbeth, leaving a sense of suspicion in the mind of the reader that Macbeth may not be who he appears. In Throne of Blood, there are no witches to make such invocation, leaving Macbeth seemingly innocent up until the moment when he decides to kill Duncan, or, in this film, Suzuki. The opening stages of Throne of Blood play a large role in the film's development. The lack of violence, witches, and the use of fog set an uncertain tone that does not drop any hints about the future of the film, especially Washizu's future. Kurosawa's Throne of Blood and Shakespeare's Macbeth also differ greatly in their portrayals of Lady Macbeth, or Lady Asagi. In the play Macbeth, Lady Macbeth makes her presence and intentions felt in her very first moments in the play. She states, Fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood, stop up the access and passage to remorse. This quotation by Macbeth makes the reader immediately aware of her growing plans of evil. Contrarily, in Kurosawa's Throne of Blood, Lady Asagi, the equivalent to Lady Macbeth, makes a much more subtle entrance into the film. Lady Asagi is first seen sitting peacefully in Washizu's castle, appearing in the type of contemplative thought. Throughout her attempts to convince Washizu to kill Suzuki, she remains completely sedentary and shows no sign of any emotion, unlike Lady Macbeth, who passionately uses strong imagery and vehement speech to try to convince Macbeth. Lady Macbeth also does not give Macbeth much of a reason to kill Duncan other than to solely attain power. Lady Asagi, on the other hand, presents Washizu with the idea that Miki, Throne of Blood's Banquo, will tell Suzuki the prophecy that Washizu will become king, which will in turn lead to Washizu's death at the hands of Duncan, or Suzuki. Despite her stoic, stoic and seemingly reserved nature, Lady Asagi is a very deceptive and contriving character. She uses the prophecy of the witch in the film to implant fear in the mind of Washizu that Miki will betray him. Through this fear, she presents Washizu with only two options, 
either stay at their castle and be killed by Miki and Suzuki, or kill Suzuki and Miki himself. She tries to create distrust of Miki and Suzuki inside Washizu by stating that Tizu Suzuki's decision to place Washizu at the front lines was intended to bring death upon Washizu. She also tries to justify the killing of Suzuki because Suzuki himself attained his throne by killing someone, showing her efforts to portray Moshizu's friends as evil. She also tries to convince him that deep down, he himself possesses ambitions to attain power, which is also the first time that she looks directly at him in the film. Despite her tranquil appearance, Lady Asagi utilizes her deception to instill fear in Washizu both of his friends and of himself. This fear, despite resistance from Washizu, ultimately leads to his decision to kill Suzuki. Therefore, Lady Asagi, like Lady Macbeth, is a strong evil presence, although she is portrayed in a much different manner. Another thing that makes Lady Asagi such an interesting character is the scene where she attempts to wash her hands of the blood. She is shown in a chaotic and unstable state as she tries desperately to wash her hands of blood that does not even exist. This scene is very ironic because Lady Asagi was the one telling Washizu how easy it is to wash his hands of the blood of Suzuki earlier in the film. At the start of the film, she represented unbridled evil while he represented goodness, but now the tables have turned dramatically as she frantically tries to repent for what he has done, while Washizu con continues to grow in ruthless evil. This reversal from the start of the film makes Lady Asagi one of the most engrossing characters in any Shakespeare adaptation, and makes Kurosawa's Throne of Blood in general an enthralling piece of film. The Lord in the Throne of Blood plays a similar role to King Duncan of Macbeth. He receives news of victory, grants titles, and travels to the castle or fort of his subordinates. However, Lord Suzuki has two major differences between himself and Duncan. First, Lord Suzuki remains stoic and unemotional throughout the entire plot, while Duncan talks laughs, and celebrates with his kinsmen. Second, Lord Suzuki travels to Ashizu's castle to plot a secret attack on his enemies, instead of, instead of to celebrate past victories. This attack plan puts Ashizu on the forefront of the battle, in a position of great danger. Both Lord Suzuki and King Duncan's downfall is their trust in their subjects act in their subjects absolute loyalty. While Duncan believes in the loyalty because of friendship and trust, Lord Suzuki's belief of loyalty comes from the ancient traditions of allegiance to the Lord in Japanese society. Both of their beliefs fail as the protagonist's greed triumphs over their fealty to their Lord. Similar to Lord Suzuki, Miki's role in the Thorn of Blood starts similar to Shakespeare's play. He wins his battle, receives a prophecy, and returns to the king with Washizu. After Washizu returns to his wife, Miki remains at the North Castle. Washizu's wife, Lady Asagi, immediately opposes Michi, believing that he will betray Washizu to Lord Suzuki. Lady Asagi's fears are proven false. Once Miki refuses to believe that Washizu killed Lord Suzuki and backs Washizu to become the next emperor, Miki proves his friendship to Washizu by turning down opportunities for power, instead helping his comrade. Washizu planned to return the favor by naming Miki's son as Heo, <coughs> until again Lady Asagi steps in and tells Washizu that she is pregnant. This leads Washizu and Lady Asagi to begin planning the assassination of Miki and his son. Miki's final scene in the play is when he returns as a ghost, only being seen by Washizu. This scene is very similar to Shakespeare's, as Lady Asagi covers for her husband's apparent craziness. In Akiri Kurosawa's Throne of Blood, he replaces the three witches with a single force spirit. 
Similar to Shakespeare's play, this spirit first appears when Miki and Washizu, representing Binkro and Macbeth, return to Spiderweb Castle from the battles. The two men hear the ritualistic chanting, coming from an old, androgynous woman. The both male and female aspect is also in the play, as Bankro cannot tell if the witches are male or female. The spirit song mentions many of the failings of humanity. Kurosawa also introduces Japanese traditions into the song, as the lyrics contain many aspects of Buddhism. The songs mentioned mentioning of karma and reincarnation come straight from the Buddhist beliefs. Additionally, the oriental aspects of the spirit are shown through the spinning wheel. The spinning wheel is a traditional tool in Eastern culture. Kurosawa uses the spinning wheel, wheel to symbolize the circle of life, as the spirit spins the wheel while singing about the death of man and reincarnation into, infla- into a flower. While the speaking parts in the fourth scene of Kurosawa's Witch are similar to Shakespeare's words in his play, the second speech from the spirit changes many of the main themes of the play. While Washizi seeks out the spirit, the spirit responds with only one apparition, a warrior. This apparition foretold that Washizu could not be defeated until the forest moved. Kurosawa ignored the other two apparitions seen in the original Macbeth. Kurosawa makes up for this by having Washizu be completely immersed in his belief that the Force could never move, and did not need any other prophecies to reassure himself of his immunity. Kurosawa uses the old androgynous spirit as the catalyst of the entire story. The spirit uses his small influence to cause death and destruction. By predicting the fortune of Washizu and Miki, The old spirit influences the death of Lord Tezuki, Miki, Lady Asagi, and Washizu. Another difference between Shakespeare's play Macbeth and Kurosawa's film Throne of Blood is the lack of recognition of eternal ramifications for Washizu's actions in Throne of Blood. In the play Macbeth, Concern regarding the afterlife plays a prominent role in Macbeth's psychological struggles regarding his decision to kill Duncan. In Act 2, Scene 1, Macbeth states, I go and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. Macbeth knowingly chooses temporal power on earth rather than eternal glory in heaven, a decision that he later realizes that he cannot undo which leads to his supposed eternal damnation in hell. In Kurosawa's Throne of Blood, however, heaven and hell are never referred to. This is, of course, largely because of the film's Japanese origin. Throne of Blood was not made for a Christian audience, as Macbeth was. Therefore, there are no references to heaven and to hell, and those the fear of an eternal damnation is not used to drive Washizu's psychological struggle. Instead, it's Washizu's contemplation of the goodness of his friends Suzuki and, or Duncan, and his insistence on trusting those friends that drive his inner conflict, perpetrated by his wife Lady Asagi. The lack of recognition of eternal ramifications also ho- helps promote Washizu's apparent innocence up until the moment he kills Suzuki. Macbeth has an eternity in hell to fear if he kills Duncan, but he decides to do it anyway helping portray the growing evil inside him, and his depiction as a damned character. In the moments leading up to Suzuki's death, Mishizu seems to not have to worry about any eternal damnation, or at least he does not admit it. Without the fear of eternal punishment, it would seem more likely that Mishizu would be more in favor of killing Suzuki, but he isn't. Instead, he strongly resists the idea and thinks of various reasons not to kill him. The fact that he resists so strongly, even though he appears to have no fear of eternal punishment, unlike Macbeth, further portrays Washizu's apparent innocence in the early stages of the film, which increases the significance and meaning of his future actions. Kurosawa's Throne of Blood is a unique take on Shakespeare's Macbeth. The reconfiguring of the story into a feudal Japanese culture creates distinctive elements that are not included in other adaptations of Macbeth. 
These elements allowed for Japanese audiences to understand the story with more ease. Despite changing some major elements of the play, Kurosawa is still able to present the story of Macbeth.